As I'm sure you're all aware, Walt Disney World and Universal Orlando Resort spend millions of dollars each and every year building new rides, attractions, and lands to help entice visitors to come to their parks versus the competition. The question is, are Disney and Universal spending their money wisely? Or could there be better ways for them to spend this money? Now, I know that might sound like a ridiculous question to ask right now, especially considering that both parks are doing pretty well for themselves, both getting a lot of attendance and uh, making a whole lot of money. But the reason I do bring this up is because I saw this tweet from Rob Yo, a legend in the theme park community, many would say. He's been around for a while. And he brought up this interesting point. According to Wikipedia, Hagrid's at Universal cost $300 million to build. However, the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster over at Epcot cost $500 million to build. So when I saw this, I was kind of like, huh, I mean, that seems like a lot of money to just be spending on one ride. I mean, obviously, you know, I know that rides cost a lot of money to build, but $300 million and $500 million for an individual attraction? Like, that just seemed a bit too high to me, and that's what kind of got me down this rabbit hole. But there was one tiny issue I had with this, and that's that Rob used the Wikipedia numbers, which of course, as we all know, you gotta take them with a grain of salt. As every teacher told you, do not use Wikipedia as a source. But I had an ace up my sleeve. Now, being the stud journalist that I am, I did my research on these numbers, and uh, Wikipedia actually does have sources for both of these estimates. And looking at the estimate for Hagrid of 300 million, they link to this Fox Business article, which funnily enough, actually links to CNBC as the source, who also says that it was worth $300 billion to build. But they don't actually give a specific source, they don't say where that number came from, but Fox Business and CNBC are both pretty reputable sources, so, even though this might not be entirely accurate, you could probably count on it being more or less reliable. As for the cost of the Guardians coaster, they link to a much less reliable source, or at least a source that I was not familiar with, that being Gulf News. But Gulf News actually says where they got the $500 million estimate from, and that was from Dennis Spiegel, an industry consultant who went ahead and estimated that the ride would have cost $500 million to build. So again, not confirmed, but that's a pretty good implication of what the ride may have cost. So with this being the case, it means we could probably safely say that Guardians cost about $200 million more to build than Hagrid's. Now, that seems kind of odd at first glance. I mean, Hagrid uses completely practical and physical effects, which typically would cost more, whereas Guardians almost entirely relies on screens. So one would think right off the bat that Guardians would cost less. But of course, there are a number of actually reasonable factors that could attribute to Guardians costing more. For instance, the fact that it's, you know, indoors. They had to build a giant building to encompass the whole ride, which, yeah, that's going to cost a lot more, but it's not going to cover the $200 million difference between these attractions. But what else? How about talent costs? I mean, we mentioned the fact that Guardians is using a lot of screens. They're using the actors from the films pretty often. And these are big name actors in the prime of their career who, of course, are going to ask for a lot of money to be in this. Whereas you look at Hagrid, what'd they ask? They asked the guy who played Rubius Hagrid, who's basically retired at this point. Like, probably cost him nothing to get that guy. On top of this, I guess it's possible that maybe it costs more to develop the ride vehicle. Of course, the ride vehicle for Guardians is somewhat unique with the spinning motion, uh, but it's certainly not more unique than the actual motorbike seats that are on Hagrid that were specifically and specially made just for that ride. So maybe you could chalk it up to that costing more, but eh, I don't know about that. There is one final kicker here that I think alongside the other three I just mentioned could add up for the $200 million difference, and that's inflation. Right Over the last year or so, we've seen a massive spike in inflation here in the U.S. that has risen the price of commodities from fuel to, you guessed it, steel, which of course is a big factor in building Guardians. Um, I know that obviously Guardians was delayed a lot, but I'm sure they were still doing a lot of construction within the last year or so, and that probably raised up the price of a lot of the things that they used to build the attraction. Now, I haven't been on Guardians yet, so I'm not going to comment too much on the quality of the ride and how much the cost of the ride translated to that. But what I do want to do is I want to put these numbers into perspective, right? Because $500 million, $300 million, we're throwing them out there, right? Really, right now, the only thing we have to compare them with is each other. But this money could have been spent on a number of other things and has been spent on things in the past. For instance, Fury 325 at Carowinds is considered to be one of the best steel coasters in the world. That ride only cost $30 million to build. Now, of course, it has 
no theming, right, whatsoever, but it's still touted as one of the best rides, period, anywhere in the world. And it literally cost a tenth of what Haggard's did. Here's another one, Verbolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now this one's nowhere near as intense or as well-respected as Fury 325, but it actually has theming elements outside of a Disney or Universal park, and this one even only costs about $54 million at an estimated price. Now you might be saying, well, Universal and Disney would never spend money on a ride like for Bolton or Fury 325. That's just not the type of experience they're going to sell. They want the immersive, extremely themed experience. And I, and I get what you're saying, but does that really cost 10 times more than what for Bolton costs? Does that really cost 10 times more than what Fury 325 costs? How about this? Transformers the Ride at Universal only costs $100 million to make. $100 million. I mean, in many aspects, it's kind of similar to Guardians, except it doesn't have like the actual roller coaster elements to it. So that's kind of funny that it costs literally a fifth of what Guardians did. How about this? Another crazy, unique screen based ride that actually does have some physical elements in it. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey only cost Universal $131 million to make. I say only because now they're spending $300 million on Hagrid's, right? I mean, the cost has gone way up in just a short period of time. But here's the real kicker, folks, and here's where we, these numbers really get staggering. In 2014, the New York Post estimated that Diagon Alley would have cost $400 million to build in its entirety, meaning that Guardians of the Galaxy cost more money to build than Diagon Alley, <laughs> one of the most well-themed, most immersive, most detailed lands ever to be built in theme park history, somehow an individual ride costs more to build than that entire land. Here's another one from the Disney side. In 2017, the Los Angeles Times reported that Disney spent an estimated $500 million to build all of Pandora, the world of Avatar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> which means that that whole land, right, which built only five years ago, cost the same amount to build as Guardians? What is going on? But here's the thing, these two might look like outliers and that Disney Universal just might spent a lot more money on these two things than they needed to or that was expected uh, as so many other presumably bigger projects cost way less or about the same to build. But here's the thing folks, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this number, but Star Wars Galaxy's Edge supposedly costs about a billion dollars to build. That is absurd. <laughs> Oh my god. And listen, I don't want to get too much into my thoughts about Galaxy's Edge, but there's a lot of like empty space in, in this land. I mean, it's not like it, it's packed with detail at every corner, you know? So it's a little bit weird that it costs that much. But it just goes to show that this isn't just like a Guardians of the Galaxy thing. This isn't just a Hagrid's thing. Both of these parks are spending way more money on rides just in the last couple of years than what they typically would. Now, before you go chirp it in the comments, yes, I know, inflation is a thing, I literally mentioned it earlier in this video, but it's not going to make that much of a difference, right? Where five years ago, you build a whole land, like Pandora, for $500 million, and now it costs that much to just build one ride. Like, that doesn't add up. So why is that? Why are these parks spending so much money on things that, presumably, just a few years ago, cost so much less? Well, in the case of Hagrid, yeah, they were dealing with some technical difficulties issues that, you know, might have cost a little bit more money. Of course, they were trying to do something that nobody's really ever done before. There isn't really a ride like Hagrid's anywhere else. I mean, you can make comparisons in certain places, but ultimately it is a pretty one-of-a-kind attraction. And on top of this, it's Harry Potter. It's Universal's breadwinner. I mean, this is the IP that Universal is going to spend the most money on, especially when they, they don't own it themselves. They have to license it from different people who own the rights. So in order to keep those rights holders happy, they gotta spend as much money as possible to show that they are invested and interested in keeping the IP in the parks. When it comes to Guardians, I, I don't really see the, those same kind of comparisons. I mean, it's not an entirely unique type of attraction. I mean, Escape from Green Gods offers a somewhat similar experience, though it's not necessarily spinning throughout the actual roller coaster motions. But the bottom line is, I just don't see where even the incentive is to spend this much money on a single attraction especially when you're talking about a park that is 
lacking in things to do and is lacking in capacity and is dealing with massive wait times even for food stands and are booking up reservations at restaurants like crazy because there's just not enough things to do there for people and you're spending 500 million dollars on one ride when that could have been dispersed across five 100 million dollar rides that could have been of the quality of transformers hello it kind of seems like maybe that money could have been better spent with Universal, Islands of Adventure already has pretty good capacity, but sure, it could use more. But ultimately, they don't really have the space. Even if they wanted to give more capacity, there's not a whole lot of room to work with at Islands of Adventure. So building that kind of money on a single attraction that was at least supposed to have insane capacity in and of itself made a lot of sense, of course, because of technical issues and logistical issues. The ride didn't end up having as much capacity as they hoped and now still kind of breaks down fairly often. But regardless, you can see the purpose of every dollar being spent. I don't really know if I see the purpose of Disney spending $500 million on one ride at Epcot when it needs so much more to do than just one ride. Not to mention, of course, the capacity and you know need for more attractions and more things to do at the other parks. I mean, Universal obviously understands that capacity is an issue, and since they know they have no space to work with at the current parks, they're going to go ahead and build a new one. Makes perfect sense. Disney, you have room at all of your existing parks. Expand them. Give them more capacity. I know I literally just chirped about this in the last video. But please, like, don't spend $500 million on one ride when that could have been dispersed across several rides It could have gave you much greater capacity. And I know you're saying, well, if you spread that money out across several rides, well, maybe those rides wouldn't be as good as Guardians is. Sure, maybe they wouldn't. But at least you wouldn't have to deal with long lines. At least you wouldn't have to deal with big crowds. At least you wouldn't have to deal with reservations disappearing like that. If you spread out that money across different attractions, different restaurants, different things to do that can take people out of the park and take people out of the lines for other rides. And I think really what I'm trying to bring up here is a needs perspective. Did Disney need to build a $500 million Guardians of the Galaxy ride? Not necessarily. Do they need to spend $500 million to expand the park's capacity? Absolutely. That should have been priority number one, is expand the capacity of the park. Not necessarily spend $500 million just on one attraction. I mean, come on Disney, you know how to do this. You spent the same amount of money on all of Pandora, which has restaurants, shops, two attractions. There's way more things to do and way more capacity eaters at that land than Guardians does. It's pretty simple how obviously Guardians was not worth the $500 million, at least not as much as Pandora was worth the $500 million. Do you not see that? So I know this turned into another Disney rant video, but I just thought it was interesting to kind of compare how Universal and Disney are spending money and how it seems that costs for things are going up. Obviously, Velocicoaster did not cost anywhere near as much as Hagrid, but we don't know the exact number for that. I couldn't find an estimate for it, but just the way it was built, the lesser on the theming side it had, obviously it costs less to build. So not necessarily that Universal is spending more money on every project going forward, but they're obviously gonna be spending a whole lot of money on this new park, so there's that. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of the day, that park costs only maybe a little bit more than Galaxy's Edge in its entirety cost, right? I mean, because come on, a billion dollars for a single land with two rides? Like, that just doesn't sound right. Anyways, Disney, hope you learned a letter lesson today. Come back next week where I'll tell you another one, all right? <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. So long. Farewell. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Toodaloo.